Earlier in the course, we worked out how government interventions, such as taxes or subsidies or price ceilings or price floors, affect the equilibrium price and quantity in a perfectly competitive market. But what if the government intervenes in a different kind of market structure, such as monopoly? Recall that monopolists maximize profits, just as competitive firms do, by producing until marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Competitive firms are price takers, so their marginal revenue is simply the market price. But monopoly firms are price makers who get to choose the price. For a monopoly firm facing a downward sloping demand curve, the marginal revenue will always be less than the price. To sell an additional unit of the good, the firm would have to lower the price to attract that additional buyer. And if the firm can't price discriminate, it must lower the price for everyone. The marginal revenue from that additional sale is the new price, less all the revenue lost from this lower price being applied to previous sales. Graphically, this results in a marginal revenue curve which is always below the demand curve faced by the monopoly. The monopoly firm will choose to produce at a point where the marginal cost curve, otherwise known as the supply curve, intersects this marginal revenue curve. And it will choose a price that is higher than the marginal revenue up here on the demand curve. Remember, even monopolists need to respect the demand curve. So what happens if the government imposes a per unit tax on firms in this market. Let's start by reviewing what happens with such a tax in a perfectly competitive market. In an earlier lecture, we modeled the per unit tax as something that shifts the supply curve up by the amount of the tax. Since a tax that the producer must pay the government for each unit sold increases the marginal cost of each unit by exactly the amount of the tax. The tax burden will be split between the consumer and producer. A per unit tax generally means that the consumer pays a bit more and producers get a bit less. But does the same hold for monopolists? After all, they can just set price. Why not pass the whole tax burden on to consumers? In a monopoly, a per unit tax still shifts the supply curve up. The producer has to send the government the tax for each unit sold, and that increases the marginal cost, just as it did in the competitive market. Once again, to find equilibrium, we find the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. This is now at a lower quantity. The price the monopolist can charge is also higher than before the tax, but not high enough to cover the full tax the producer must send to the government. So even though monopoly firms have market power, they end up sharing the tax burden with consumers, just as perfectly competitive firms do. This is because even monopolists must respect supply and demand. If consumers want their good less, the monopolist is going to get less for it. But wait a second. The typical problem with monopoly firms is that they choose to produce a lower level than the allocatively efficient level a perfectly competitive firm would choose. And this tax just reduced production even more. This means less efficiency and even more deadweight loss. So taxes cause even more distortion when they're imposed in a monopoly market. So what tools does a government have to make a monopoly market more efficient? One such tool is price regulation, the policy of setting prices by a government or other authority. Now, when we discuss price regulation in a competitive market, we talked about how it leads to lower efficiency. After all, as we discussed, Social welfare is maximized at the competitive market equilibrium, and adding a price regulation simply messes that up. But the situation changes when there's a monopoly. This is because a price ceiling can solve the problem that leads to monopoly under production in the first place. With a binding price ceiling, the firm would have no incentive to cut back on production, since it can no longer raise prices. If this price ceiling is the same as the equilibrium price, that would have resulted in a perfectly competitive market, the price and quantity in these markets would be the same. Certainly, the monopoly firm could continue to produce at this level and simply lower its price to the level of the price ceiling. But in that case, the monopolist would be better off 
increasing production and selling the extra units at the same price. There's no poisoning effect since the monopolist doesn't have to lower the price to sell those extra units. The marginal revenue curve over this range becomes a horizontal line. As a result, the monopoly would be just as efficient as perfect competition. So that's great news. Why don't we always do that? We can just solve the monopoly problem. Well, there are two difficulties. First, we don't necessarily know the competitive price in a market. This can lead to us setting the price ceiling at the wrong place. Second, for some monopolies, even setting the price at the competitive price might not be enough to keep them in business. This is the case with natural monopolies. Remember that natural monopolies are those with high fixed costs and powerful economies of scale, like a water utility company. Once one firm has made that initial huge investment in pipes and facilities and is delivering water to a town, it's very difficult for a competitor to enter the market. Due to their strong economies of scale, natural monopolies face a downward sloping supply curve. Once the pipe infrastructure is in place, it costs even less to deliver water to the next house as it did to get water to the previous house. With large initial fixed costs and strong economies of scale, a natural monopoly has an average total cost curve that is above its marginal cost curve. When the monopoly was allowed to produce at the quantity, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, it could charge this price up here on the demand curve. Since the price was higher than the average total cost, the monopoly made an economic profit. But say the government introduces price regulation and forces this natural monopoly to charge the price given by where the supply equals demand, down here. This price is lower than the firm's average total cost. The firm will go out of business. It can't continue selling its good for less than it takes to make them. So now we have a problem. If we let the firm do what it wants, we end up with prices that are too high. If we regulate at the competitive price, we drive the firm out of business. What can we do? We have a clear answer. Combine the regulation with a one-time payment to the natural monopoly to make sure they can break even. This is called a lump sum subsidy. It doesn't depend on how much the firm is producing. So unlike a per unit subsidy or tax, a lump sum subsidy won't affect any of the marginal cost or revenue curves. Its effect on the firm is simply to lower its fixed costs and keep it in business after the government puts a ceiling on the price it can charge consumers.